Thank you. Uh, first, um, I'd like to thank the organizer for the invitation. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. So I will speak uh, about uh, an ongoing project with uh, uh, Michel Zidor. And uh, I'd like to, to start with uh, motivations. So in fact, it's a, it's a motivation that uh, we already seen in uh, Buzzard's talk. So it's a, it's a so-called uh, refined GGP conjecture uh, about unitary groups. So th let me recall the further setting. So we start from a quadratic extension of a number field. And uh, maybe the node sigma, the generator of the Galois group. And we start with an uh, uh, E vector space of a fixed dimension n equipped with a non degenerate Hermitian, sigma Hermitian form. And we extend uh, this space by adding a line. And we extend uh, the form so that the sum here is orthogonal. Uh, and we normalize, we normalize uh, the added vector in the following way. So with uh, this data, we can attach first a unitary group denoted by H. So this is unitary group attached to V. And uh, we have the unitary group of V times the unitary group of W. And it will be denoted by, by G. And uh, we have a, a diagonal embedding and of H inside G in the following matrix way. This is G, G1 with uh, obvious notations. So let me denote by A the ring of Adels of F. And uh, let pi be a cuspidal, the reducible cuspidal automorphic representation of G of A. So on the space of pi, we have a, a period that is a linear form attached to H. So this is a period. And it is given by integration along the subgroup H. So more precisely, we take the quotient of adelic point of H divided by the subgroup of rational points. So we have a, a period. <coughs> And the conjecture due to Ichino and Ikeda in the setting of orthogonal group, but it has been in, um, extended to the case of unitary groups by Niall Harris. And this is also called the GGP conjecture, the refined GGP conjecture. So the statement is a Eulerian factorization of uh, the global period. So we start from a vector, so in automorphic, uh, automorphic forms in, the, in pi. And uh, we look at the square modulus of the period. And the conjecture predicts that we have a Eulerian factorization so the facts are normalized so that the product is almost, uh, the, the factors in the product are almost all one. And uh, we have an interesting uh, uh, coefficient here. So first, 
we have the size of the centralizer of uh, the other parameter attached to the representation pi. And uh, we have a global uh, factor made of a uh, special value of uh, L functions. So let me recall. So this has to do with uh, our source parameter. So here, curly L uh, S pi uh, is a quotient uh, at S of the rankin selberg L function attached to the base change of pi to the product GLN cross GLN plus 1 over uh, the quadratic extension E, divided by some adjoint L function attached to pi's. And we have also to multiply by some elementary uh, products of abelian uh, L function. Attached to the quadratic extension, to the quadratic character uh, eta attached to the, by uh, abelian class field theory, attached to the, to the extension E over F. So here, Implicitly, uh, I have decomposed my global representation as an abstract product of local representation. So I have also abstractly decomposed my, my vector phi, phi as a product of uh, phi v. Um, I have a Peterson product that I can also uh, decompose locally. And the local period. So the local period, so at least if pi v is tampered, is defined by the following integration. This is an integration of the, so v is a place, so it's a product of, of all places of, uh, of f. And I'm looking at the completion of f at v. And I'm looking at the, uh, the f v points of h. I'm integrating over. Uh, this subgroup. So this is the local pairing. And uh, we have also the decomposition of the R measure implicitly. And uh, we normalize by the local variant of the factor uh, L. Uh, and implicitly, um, the R measure and the decomposition of the R measure is chosen so that uh, almost all factors uh, are one. Okay, so a lot of progress uh, has been ma made uh, in recent years um, for this conjecture. So the, there were uh, very substantial uh, progress due to Wake Giant. And uh, it has been completed also by uh, Ang Sui and also uh, by uh, the work of uh, Bezard Plessis. So in, uh, in all of uh, these works, we need uh, to, to prove conjecture. We need a local hypothesis on the representation pi. That is, we assume that uh, pi v is a super, super, super cuspidal at uh, uh, one uh, finite place, but also that the base change of pi v is super cuspidal. And in, um, so that the, the base change of pi is also a cuspidal representation of GLN cross uh, GLN plus 1. So the, the, this, uh, this is a local hypothesis. So I will explain in the talk uh, how to track this, uh, uh, this uh, local hypothesis. Um, so be before going to, to that, uh, 
I want also to mention that the conjecture uh, can be uh, reformulated in an equivalent way in a functional analysis uh, fashion. So for this, we can introduce relative character, both uh, locally and globally. So globally, so relative character uh, is a distribution. So f is a test function on, uh, on your group. And uh, this is a sum over an orthonormal basis of uh, v pi of the period of pi f acting on, on phi times the, con the complex conjugate of the period of uh, phi. And uh, we have also, in the same way, local character. So for a local test function. Ah, so sorry. So, uh, and the conjecture is equivalent to the fact that uh, we have uh, Eulerian factorization with the same, so the conjecture is equivalent to the, this uh, factorization with the same, same constant. And the point is really to, to compute the constant. Okay. So all the mention uh, worked. <coughs> A follow a strategy uh, suggested by Jacquet and Rallis. So, what uh, what is the first input of uh, Jacquet Rallis? First, in such a conjecture, also as we as we understand also from the endoscopic program, uh, instead of uh, looking at uh, one isolated automorphic representation, it's better to look at uh, representation in a family. And uh, what, uh, what can give such a family is uh, a relative trace formula. So that suggests to, to introduce a relative trace formula for unitary groups. And uh, how can we do this? Uh, well, so we, we have uh, our test function on the unitary group. Attached to this, we have an automorphic, the automorphic kernel, which is a function of two variables uh, on g of a. And it is given by the sum of a rational point of gf, of f x minus 1 gamma y. And uh, since we want to, to recover such a relative character, Jacquet and Raleigh suggested to integrate the kernel over, so each variable is integrated over bracket h, so the quotient of adelic point of h by the rational point of h. But of course, I have to put some quotation mark here because uh, uh, the, uh, the integral is not convergent and uh, we have to introduce some uh, regularization process or some truncation process a la Arthur. Also. <laughs> and uh, this has been done by Zidor. So uh, we have the following theorem due to the door. So let me denote this expression in quotation mark. So this means regularized, truncated version uh, a la Harser of this expression. So this is uh, relative straight formula. We have two expansion, one of uh, geometric nature And one of 
spectral data. So let me give some uh, uh, more explanations. So this is a sum of uh, absolutely convergent, an absolutely convergent sum of uh, uh, distribution. So here we start. We start from G, and uh, we have a canonical map from G to the coarse quotient by the double action on H, and uh, this uh, coarse quotient is denoted by A. So the the geometric terms in the relative trace formula are indexed by rational points uh, of the coarse quotient. And inside the coarse quotient, we have an open dense uh, subset, so a regular uh, subset. This is the image of element in G that both have a trivial centralizer and uh, mm, <coughs> uh, the orbits of such elements are closed. And so for a regular element, So um, a rational regular element A. So there are two uh, options. Either the fiber has no rational points. So in this case, the distribution is easy to define. It is 0. Or it is not, uh, not empty. And then it is simply a conjugacy, classes, a conjugacy class. So the distribution associated is a global orbital integral. And uh, gamma, so the invariant of gamma is A. So in general, the distribution uh, associated to non-regular elements are uh, somewhat uh, mysterious. But um, What can say? What can I? What can? I, what I can say? <coughs> is that uh, unlike uh, Arthur trace formula, the distribution J A and also the spectral distribution are in fact H A plus H A invariant. So we, we have not, in this case, a phenomenon of uh, weighted orbital integrals that uh, causes non-invariance in the trace formula. So it, it is a, a simple feature of the, this uh, trace formula. And for the spectral side, well, if uh, so k is a, a caspidal datum, that is a pair of a levy plus a cuspid representation of the levy up to some equivalence. And if chi is of the following form g pi, with pi uh, a cuspid automorphic representation of g, uh, then the distribution is nothing else but the relative character. And in fact, the so, uh, the distribution are not only uh, invariant, but in fact, um, they are in uh, the weak closure of regular local orbital integrals. So we can define, obviously, So the variety characters, so this is uh, the, the distribution I have defined before. So it is uh, constructed from period. So the sum of an orthogonal basis of the open the representation. So this is precisely the, the distribution we want to factorize. So 
So in fact, uh, yeah, so we can define a regular local orbital integral. So simply by uh, splitting uh, over all places uh, this uh, orbital integral. And the fact is that uh, all these distributions are in fact in the weak closure of such uh, regular orbital integrals. And in fact, we have a much more general result that is in this situation, in the situation of uh, H cross H acting on G, in fact, we have the, the, the density principle all that is such, uh, such orbital integrals are in fact uh, weakly dense, uh, so locally, uh, in, in uh, the space of uh, invariant distribution. Sorry. That's the same as the usual trace formula then? No, no. No, 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 no because we have, we have non invariants. Uh. Non -invariant. mm. I understand the reason is this isn't a trace. Well, uh, Jackie uh, is trying to. Relate. came and said it is a trace, but I don't see it as a trace. It's a period. If you're taking the kernel and you compute, you're not integrating down the diagonal or taking the trace. Mm. No, no, but we. we uh, uh, we could uh, um, we could meet strange phenomena even in this uh, I mean uh, non non urgent non urgent case I mean uh, so for for, for uh, different action uh, on the subgroup uh, acting on the group we we may um, we may meet the same phenomenon as in Arthur this is not the point I think that uh, the the main point is that uh, generically the centralizer are trivial. So the, the central is trivial mm -hmm. generically. So th this is a big difference with, uh, with uh, Arthur case. We see the, the action of G uh, on itself by conjugation. OK. So uh, this uh, was the first input um, of uh, Jacques Arais. And the second input is a second uh, relative trace formula, but in a somewhat uh, different situation. So the second situation is the following. We start from the group GLN E cross GLN plus one E. So in fact, uh, I will consider the restriction. I, I'm I want to view this group as an F group, so I, I take a restriction of scholars. So this is uh, clearly an analog of G. So we have an obvious analog of H, which is a diagonal embedding of GLN. But we have to introduce another subgroup, which is GLN F cross <coughs> GLN plus one F. So in this situation, we can also consider the automorphic kernel. And we can integrate it over so one variable. So I will denote it by h1 prime. And this group is h2 prime. So the first integration is over the subgroup h1 prime. So uh, this integration uh, is here to make appear the so-called Rankin-Selberg period that are related to the uh, Rankin-Selberg integral. But we have to uh, make appear another integral over the second subgroup H2 prime. And we have to twist this by a character I will denote eta y. So eta y has a simple uh, definition. It is eta. So y, you can see it. it you can view it as a, uh, a couple of y1, uh, y2. And we have uh, a dichotomy on the parity uh, of n. So these are essentially integration of h2, but twisted by the character. And uh, this integration is called the flicker uh, rallies period. And the role of this period is to kill, is to kill the part of the GLN spectrum that does not come from a unitary group by stable base change. So, and, uh, so. so once again, quotation mark.
so we need to, to introduce a truncation process and this has been done by Zidor so this is RTF for G prime so RTF for G prime has two expansion one of geometric nature and one of spectral nature so this is a formally this is the same statement so here I consider the coarse quotient by the action of uh, h1 prime and h2 uh, prime but in fact it is the same it can be identified with the quotient of uh, the unitary group by uh, the double action of uh, h cross h so we have the same uh, the same index for the geometric uh, objects and uh, in the GLN case we have not this uh, dichotomy any uh, any uh, regular uh, element uh, in the coarse quotient in a rational one uh, gives you a, 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 an orbital integral, a global one. So twisted, this is a twisted orbital integral. <coughs> and all the distribution are invariant also. So equivariant, in fact, bec because we have this character. And in fact, they are in the weak closure, because we have also a density principle, in the weak closure of local and regular orbital integral. So for for non-regular uh, A, the distribution are somewhat mysterious. For, uh, for cuspidal uh, da data that are not of the form G prime pi with pi uh, uh, a cuspidal automorphic form, the distribution are also mysterious. But for a cuspidal datum of the form g pi with pi uh, cuspidal j uh, k uh, or j prime k perhaps if you want to, to distinguish the two sides so j prime k has a factorization And the constant here is essentially the constant uh, we are looking for, namely, it is the value at uh, one half of the L function, the rankin salberg function of pi, divided by some assi L function. So, uh, of pi at one. So there are, for each component, there is an SIL function. And uh, so the, the SIL function uh, comes with uh, in pairs, so plus and minus. And one uh, has no polar. Uh, so if the representation is auto dual, uh, conjugate dual, uh, then one, uh, one of, of both has a pole, but uh, not the other. So we take the, here the other, the other one. And the, this, uh, this factorization. Uh, so it's due to Wei Zhang, and it is based on the work of uh, Jacquet, Piatesky, Shapiro, Shalaika on uh, L uh, rankin selberg function, and on the work of uh, Flickr <coughs> on the flicker rice period uh, and the uh, SIL function. Okay. So now the idea uh, of uh, Jacquet. Uh, 
and rallies is to uh, pull back such an identity to the unitary side. And for this, they suggest to use the two relative trace formula and to have a comparison for enough uh, test function on the geometric side. So this is a part of program that uh, can be done. So this is comparison of geometric sites. <coughs> so we have the following theorem, so which is due to Zidor and myself. So we, we take test function, which are decomposable. So one on the unitary side and the other one in the GLN side. side. And we assume that they have um, with um, so that they are regular local orbital integral a match. So what does it mean? In fact, uh, uh, we can see uh, the local orbital integrals on the unitary side as, as uh, some function on the regular set of the base, of the, 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 the point on the set of the point of the local, um, the FV points uh, of uh, the uh, open uh, regular subset. And we can do the same thing, the same thing uh, on the GLN side. So in fact, because we have a character, uh, orbital integrals are not really a function uh, on the coarse quotient, but with a choice of, uh, of a so-called transfer factor, factor, or perhaps better, with a choice of a section of uh, the canonical map to, to the quotient, we can see uh, local orbital integrals of the GLN side as function on A. So uh, this statement, uh, this uh, assumption makes sense. And uh, as soon as we have such a, such a condition, then we can show that for all elements in the base, the orbital integral, so, so ge ge the geometric uh, distribution on the unitary side is equal to um, the geometric distribution on the unitary side. So as a consequence, you see that you have, we have equality we have equality of a relative trace formula for uh, such uh, functions uh, with uh, matching uh, orbital integrals. And the fact is that we can produce many, many matching functions. So in fact, so remark, um, so here the, uh, there is a, a caveat at uh, Archimedean place, at Archimedean places. So um, let me assume that any Archimedean, Archimedean place V is split in the quadratic extension. So in this case, and this is due to Wei Chang, so this is a so-called transfer, and this is also due to Yun and Gordon. This is a so-called fundamental lemma in this situation. For any <coughs> function on the unitary side, there is a function on the uh, GLN side with matching orbital integrals. So if you remember, uh, I said that uh, perhaps so sometimes uh, uh, there are uh, points in the quotient um, 
that uh, uh, do not have a pre-image in a rational point of the unitary group. So for these points, the orbital integrals in the unitary size are, are zero. And uh, we cannot hope we cannot hope uh, a function with orbital integrals uh, uh, with such orbital integrals uh, uh, that uh, do not vanish. So we, we cannot uh, See, if f is a transfer, then the orbital integrals vanish at uh, such points. But if we want to, to treat any general function, what is better to do is to consider all the emergent form. And then we have the same statement. But on the left hand side, we have to sum over all emergent form. So in the uh, Vaughan uh, language, uh, we take all the pure inner form uh, of, uh, of, 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 your, of your group. <coughs> so as a consequence, uh, we have the full, the full uh, geometric uh, comparison. So we have a full comparison of uh, spectral size. And the point now is uh, to uh, isolate uh, representation. So first, following uh, Langland's method, uh, we, uh, we, may, uh, we, we can deduce uh, the equality of the discrete part uh, of the trace formula. And then we can separate things according to uh, echo eigenvalues. But the, the point is that, uh, for the moment, we do not have, uh, we do not have, uh, we do not understand precisely what is uh, the discrete part of the, the, the spectral size. So this is uh, the next part of the program, is to understand, to better understand the spectral side. So from now on, I will uh, only consider linear groups. So I have the same notation, but I remove the prime. So G now is a G prime, and HI is, H I is a former HI prime. OK. So we would like to see uh, what, is the what is the contribution in the trace formula of the the continuous spectrum. So the continuous, continuous spectrum is made of uh, Eisenstein series. And we need to uh, also to extend uh, the notion of periods that, has, that is defined a priori for uh, rapidly decreasing functions to much more general functions. And uh, so this has been done by uh, other people. So this has a regular, regularized uh, period. So first we have the regularized flicker Rayleigh period. So I borrow this from the work of uh, Jacquet, Lapid, and Rugaski. So the point is you start from an automorph um, an automorphic form on G, and you want to integrate it uh, on the subgroup, uh, in this case, uh, H2. So uh, this, uh, this also introduces a variant of uh, Arthur truncation, Arthur uh, truncation operator. So introduce uh, what they called a mixed truncation operator. So this, is, this has a formula reminiscent from Arthur truncation operator. You, you have the sum over all parabolic subgroup of H. This is an alternate sum. We have a sum. So we, we in fact, we sum over all, all parabolic. This is standard parabolic subgroup. But in fact, it is the sum over all, par all uh, f rational parabolic subgroup. We have some condition. So, so h is an element in h a. So t is a simply a parameter. You can forget it. It is not so important. So here, this is a, a condition. This is, uh, so 
Here we have a parabolic, so you can look at the Iwasawa decomposition. If you have an Iwasawa decomposition, you can look at the uh, absolute value of the block uh, of the Levis. And we can put a condition on this, uh, this absolute value, that is, uh, so the, the log of the absolute value has to be in uh, an obtuse uh, veil chamber attached to P. So this is the condition. And here we put, uh, we put the, um, a constant term. So if it, uh, if it were our Arthur truncation operator, we put uh, P here, but I'm looking at P as, uh, so I, I extend the scalars to, to E. So I have such, such a formula. So uh, this is a way to, um, so the, the behavior at infinity of uh, phi is, uh, is controlled by the constant term. And uh, in some sense, you, you remove uh, the divergent part. And uh, this, uh, this operator has a virtue of uh, transforming a function of moderate growth into uh, rapidly decreasing functions. So for such a function, you can uh, integrate over h. It is not a problem. But the beautiful fact is that uh, with the total to, 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 uh, egal identity lemma of Langlands, we have an inversion formula that is we can recover your automorphic function restricted under the subgroup uh, HA as a sum over parabolic subgroup and so on mm -hmm. as before. Of now I remove the, the at. This means that we have we we are in an acute uh, veil chamber. Of what? Of the truncated uh, phi, but with a truncation relative to the parabolic. So we can recover h. So if we want to define in general an integration. So there is also a character. So we want to define this. And it will be the fl um, flicker Alice period. Okay. Now we simply integrate uh, p by p. So this gives you the integration of, uh, so this is h2, h2, so this is the same. So we can integrate this. So of course, uh, <laughs> it's not really true. So here we have a divergent integral, but uh, for, uh, in some sense, trivial reason, we are summing, uh, uh, we are summing uh, lattice, uh, we are summing over lattice point in some cone. So what can be done? It can be regular, regularized. That is, we can put some variable here. With this variable, the integration makes sense uh, as soon as omega is negative uh, relative to, uh, to this chamber. And we can an analytic continue this integral and, and take the value at 0. So it, it works for uh, almost all automorphic forms. In fact, we have, we have some mild restriction uh, uh, on the, the coefficient of, of uh, phi. OK. And, uh, we also need to consider uh, the Rankin-Selberg period. So to somewhat extend the theory of uh, Jacquet, Piazzescu, Shapiro, Shalaika. And this has been done by uh, Ichino Yamana. So we have Rankin-Selberg period. Uh. So this has a, so, so we start from a phi and automorphic form, and we want to integrate phi over the group H1. And uh, it has, a, so uh, we can introduce a variant of this uh, truncation. So here we have to sum over parabolic subgroup of G, but, but it contains the standard Borel of H. And, uh, then the theory is uh, almost the same. Uh, 
we can consider such integrals And here we use so a variant of uh, the previous uh, truncation operator, which I call uh, Ichino Yamana. So this define this define the uh, Rankin-Selberg uh, period of phi for uh, so for automorphic forms with some mild restriction uh, on exponents uh, of phi. So uh, now um, I can state a theorem. So this is uh, just a step in our project. But uh, um, it, uh, it relates a priori. So a priori, the, the spectral distribution in the relative choice formula um, are built from the automorphic kernel and the automorphic kernel associated to the parabolic subgroup of your group and it is um, they are not built from a uh, truncation operator so this, the point of the, the content of the theorem is that we have a, in fact we have an expression for such dis for, for such distributions in terms of truncation operators so i, I start from a cuspidal datum of g and uh, so using uh, using uh, lang lang decompositions according to uh, cuspidal datum so this is not the fine uh, lang lang decomposition it, it is a statement that is it is uh, rather easy to to, to 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 get so i can develop uh, my again so this is uh, the automorphic kernel attached to a test function and uh, I can develop the, the kernel according to uh, cuspidal uh, data so here this is the kernel of f acting on the, this uh, this factor and uh, then the distribution attached to uh, key is uh, so in a in a formula that is, that uh, is reminiscent from the work of uh, Jacques Lapidrogalski and uh, Ichino Yamana, so we have a sum of a um, parabolic subgroup of G that contains <coughs> the standard Borel. We have a sum of a parabolic subgroup of H two of a, a star integral so over h1 a mod out by p1 intersected with h and i take the rational point and i take an integral over h2 uh, of a mod out by p2 of f so here i can put a star or i can uh, i can uh, let the integral um, without a star and uh, I have the two uh, uh, the two characteristic functions of uh, attached to to um, acute cone to p one and to p two. So perhaps there are two variables, and I use the truncated operator. So for the, the automorphic kernel attached to, to key, and I use the Ichino Yamana truncation operator on the right, and I use uh, the Jacques Lapid Rogavsky truncation operator on the left. <coughs> and I have the character eta. So this makes a first link between uh, between this uh, this regularized period and the distribution. This is a starting point. Uh, 
Is it dependent of what? It depends on t, but in fact, it does not depend on t. So, uh, <laughs> no, no, t, t is really. No, no, but it, so it, it is like if you write uh, integration of uh, 0 to t plus t to infinity. So it does no, not depend on t. If, if, if there's a first uh, regularized finite part, you don't take the regular, you don't evaluate t equal to 0 or anything? No. No, no, it's, uh, it's really like this. The final identity. Yeah, there, there is no t. So, so I, I forget to say the the period. So you get an invariant uh, functional that does not depend on t. Uh, the t is uh, really auxiliary. You, you may take uh, zero, I think. Yes. So here. Yeah. So for the for the okay for the moment it is not clear, but yeah no but that, but uh, I think in the end we will we will not see anything because uh, yeah we will not see anything. Yeah. Yes, but the trace formula is non-invariant. <laughs> um, yeah. Why? You have both truncations here and a regularized integral that involves aromorphic continuation. Yes. Is there a reason why one would choose to do both and, and not do just one or the other? I, I, don't, I do not have philosophical reason, <coughs> but it's a practical reason. So you, you may, put a, may put a star, it's okay also. I think yeah. even with the cut of P, he's saying that that doesn't convert to some degree. Uh, even after the cut of P, Yes. So the, 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 the f here we, yeah. we cannot remove the star. But here it's not a problem big so because uh, we have a function uh, with compact support essentially. So. Uh. so let me uh, let me give you, uh, you an explicit expression. Uh, we get for a specific a specific hospital data. So <coughs> I start from a levy and a pi, the hospital data. So pi, if you can write it as a, as a tensor product, GLN, GLN plus one, and pi. So uh, pi n is of the following form: sigma one. Sigma, sigma r, so sigma i, our cuspidal automorphic representation of the block of uh, the first part of m, uh, if I can say this, and uh, pi n plus 1 is in is tau 1, blah, 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 tau r prime, so tau r is also cuspidal, and the assumption is that uh, sigma i uh, is not isomorphic to sigma j if i is j, but is not isomorphic also to the conjugate, conjugate dual of of, uh, of sigma j, and the same here. Okay, then in this case. <coughs> Then in this case, the distribution can be written as a sum over an orthonormal basis um, of the induced representation from pi of the Rankin-Sarberg period attached 
to uh, the Eisenstein series that can be deduced from, uh, that can be constructed from pi at zero. And we have the action of f uh, times the flicker Alice period of uh, phi conjugate and uh, I take the flicker Alice period uh, relative to the lady. So this is this is a case where uh, we can uh, we can give uh, um, a satisfactory answer. Uh, so we see that. Uh, we start from a, a cuspidal datum that contributes uh, continuously in the trace formula, and we get a discrete, uh, a discrete contribution, in fact. So if, um, what can I say also, that uh, this distribution, so this is a theorem, yeah, theorem uh, with the door. Uh, this distribution has also a factorization, so using the work of uh, Ichino and uh, Yamana. This has a factorization, and in the factorization, we uh, see a global coefficient appear, and without uh, surprise, this is a value at one half of the rankin salberg uh, function of pi divided by the Azial function with the, the right sign of uh, so at one of pi. Okay, and uh, what I can say also is that if uh, gk is not zero, then uh, you see that uh, sigma one plus plus plus. So it's it's a box. Sigma R plus uh, so if it is a uh, not zero, in fact uh, this can be seen. This sum can be seen as a, as a Arthur parameter. Uh, is it is a discrete uh, Arthur parameter. It is a parameter for uh, a cuspidal uh, a cuspidal tomorphic representation of uh, unitary groups. And conversely, uh, if we start if we start with uh, cuspidal tomorphic representation. Uh, with such a um, on unitary group with such uh, Arthur parameter, uh, Ishino and Yamana shows that if the period is non zero, then uh, the value at one half of the Bayesians of the of, of uh, the representation uh, of uh, so the value at uh, of the rankin sarwell function at one half of the the Bayesian of the representation is not zero. So a, a part a weak uh, weak form of the conjecture. Essentially, so essentially, this is uh, you, you may replace your group by M, and uh, you have a notion of flicker Alice period uh, on M. On M, yes. On the uh, so, B pi denotes the space of the inducing data. Yes, yes. It's not the induced representation. It's on the levy. Yes. yes, you can. Yes, but the first integral is. Yes, yes. So you kind of, uh, what does it mean, Eisenstein series? No, but you, uh, so, no, no, but it's like uh, when you when you define a pairing on the induced representation, so you have a part that is an integration of your compact ones. So. Okay. The power of two? Ah, ah, sorry, sorry, yes. Uh, so, so the coefficient here uh, un undetermined yeah, for the moment. Yeah. So, so I am running. Uh, sorry. Uh, so here it's not a problem, but here uh, it is a ranking Salberg. So it has a meaning as a, as a regularized period. Yeah. So what I can say. So what is the next part of the, the program? So in general, for uh, general uh, cuspidal datum, so we can uh, we have a finer decomposition of the kernel. 
So according to the fine Langlands uh, decomposition. So what happens if, uh, if we look at the discrete part, so in the sense of the spectral decomposition, if you look at the discrete part of K, then it has no contribution in this distribution. And uh, we, we began to look at uh, the oposite uh, contribution, that is uh, uh, the contribution that is induced from a, a cuspidol, so it is uh, built from uh, a cuspidol as a series. A certain series uh, built from a cuspidal representation. So uh, the, um, this part of the kernel uh, has a spectral expansion uh, where it appears some uh, complex integration. And uh, the problem is uh, <laughs> to invert adelic and uh, complex integration. And in th the first process is to uh, permute this integral and the complex integral. And uh, this can be done uh, following uh, the work of uh, Lapid uh, on the uh, relative Jacquet trace formula, another, another one. And then we have uh, two, um, so we can, so in some sense, uh, this integral, uh, has, uh, so we can view it uh, as uh, the value of a function that is uh, defined by a convergent integral uh, on uh, some half plane, and uh, we get the value at zero uh, as the analytic continuation. So if we, if we keep the variable, we can exchange, exchange the, the integration. And then we are faced with uh, some uh, problem of uh, Hilbert uh, integral. So that is, we have, uh, we have an integral such, uh, such as which, has, uh, which is uh, well defined for z, uh, not, uh, not uh, in, uh, in the real axis. T is playing a role here, because you put T in artificially to make cutoffs, but of course the left hand side in RC doesn't depend on T, but when you start switching, yeah, no, no, okay, okay. You start so, switching so then the individual pieces depend on Of course, of course, yes, yes. And but we can. And uh, and So, so yes, so one part is uh, to understand, so we have such integral for, uh, say, negative uh, R, or, or, and uh, we have to extend in the other side, so, so there is a first singular value, so we, we have to, to pass through in some sense. So it can be done and it gives you uh, some uh, residual contribution in some sense, and we, but we have not finished uh, um, the process because we have to evaluate uh, not only here, but far away from the. <laughs> but uh, we can see, uh, we can see also uh, uh, discrete contribution appears already at the, the second step. So I will stop. Sorry.